Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to put a cloth simulation onto a character that you've already rigged and animated. So um, a lot of people have been asking me like how do you make a cloth simulation work with a rigged character? So I'm going to be making this scene file here available for free. It's in the description below. You can go to BlendSwap and download it. So what it is is just this female character here that is that I've gone ahead and rigged for you guys and I've done this little quick animation and it starts in a T pose and I'm going to explain why this T pose is important when you ever you're doing this sort of thing. So you start it out of a T pose and it's just this basic little animation that she does and um, we're going to be box modeling some really basic um, clothes on top of her and then we're just going to be running the simulation. So we're going to just be modeling this really basic dress. It's nothing fancy. I didn't put a lot of time into it. You can see it doesn't look that realistic but it's just to kind of introduce you to some of the basic things to keep in mind when you're doing this and I hope you guys like this tutorial so this scene is scene file is available in the description below so go check that out on BlendSwap. Let's get started. Okay so once you've downloaded the file that I've provided in the link below you're gonna see if you open it up we have a character here. This character is rigged it's animated and by default I've just kind of left it on frame 119 but all you have to do is drag this slider down back to frame zero. Now you can notice with this character I have posed this character in my animation that for the first few frames, so between frame zero and frame 30, the character is just standing in this T pose and not moving, and then my animation comes into play. And the reason we're doing this is whenever we're gonna model our clothing, our cloth simulation around our character, we wanna take two things into consideration. So a T pose is gonna give us the least amount of um, complexity to work around. So if my character is in a complex pose, it's a lot more work to work around the character. So just having it in a T pose makes things easier. Not only that, when we make our clothing with box modeling, we can also give it a mirror modifier, which is gonna make things easier for us because we don't have to do as much work. So with a character of your choice, one that you've rigged, make sure you've animated the first few frames in a T pose. If you're using this one, then you don't have to do it because I've already done it. So make sure you're in frame one. In frame one, we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options and add in a cube. And you can see our cube has a, that little orange dot in the middle. That is our origin point. So you wanna go G, Z, and just move this guy up so that origin point is roughly in the middle of our character. So G, Z, just move it up. And then go S just to scale it down like that. So we have this cube here. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode. We can just go up here and go into edit mode. And let me just enable my screencast keys as well for you guys so you can see what I'm pressing. So what we're gonna do is go Control R and add in a loop cut and then go V to cut it. And then select any one of these vertices, go Control L and X and delete. So we only have our right side here, or it's the left side, but from our right perspective. We can go to our modifiers, add a modifier, and then we're gonna go add in a mirror and it, by default it's gonna be an X, which is what we want. Okay, so if you're in a front over graphic view, that's gonna be X. And come down here, it's very important that you enable clipping. Now I'm gonna show you a very easy way to make a dress. So what we're gonna do is go into a right orthographic view. In a right orthographic view, we're gonna hit A to select all of these vertices, then go S, Y, and just scale them in a little bit. Then we're gonna grab these vertices here and go G, just bring them down. And what we're going to do is just grab these vertices here in wireframe mode and just move them around. Okay, so from the side, it's not neither one of these edges are penetrating the character. Then we're going to go E to extrude, scale it up, rotate it a little bit. And we're just doing some really bulky, boxy geometry to start off with. And go E to extrude. And this one we're going to keep just right under the arms. So make sure it's not intersecting there. And then go E one more time to extrude this one up and then R to rotate it. So just something like this. Grab this guy at the bottom, go S, Y, just scale it out. And then E, bring it down. And then you can go to your front orthographic view. And what we can do here is just move these guys around. So we're just trying to make a rough box around the character. Instead of adding too much detail in first, it's a big mistake a lot of people make when they're doing this sort of thing. So just keep it really simple box geometry like this, okay? So as I know at the moment it looks really rough, but what we're gonna do is keep adding in detail. So we're gonna go Control R, add in a loop here. And then if we go Control, um, click on this vertice and go con um, Shift and Control and click on this one at the top. Okay, why didn't that work? 
Okay, so it should select this loop here. So just select all of these vertices and then go G and just move these guys in and then do the same thing here. Just select all of these um, vertices here and go G and just move them in to here. Okay, this is all we're doing. It's just building a rough box around our character. Keeping things very simple. Okay, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is go to our face select here and we're gonna select these faces, okay, that are around the arm. And we're gonna go E, S and just extrude them in. And then G and just bring them out to here. Just where our arm is, like that. And then go X and delete those faces. So we're just building this really rough little box around a character. Then go to our edge select and then we go Control R, add in a loop here. And it doesn't have to be exactly like I'm doing it, but just the aim here is just to build a really rough box around a character. Just these guys here, bring them in. Doesn't have to be complicated. Loop select these guys, go S. X, just flatten them a bit. And then with these guys, you can go E to extrude them and then S to scale. Just make sure nothing's intersecting. Grab this guy, bring it in. Just really basic. It doesn't have to be complicated at all. Just kind of like grab that. Beautiful. And then we can add in some more geometry over, over here. Go Control R, add in a loop cut. And then we can go Control R over here, add in the loop cut. And just keep adding in loops like this. Give it a bit more detail, and then Control R, add in the loop cut over here. And then what we want to do is go back to our face select, select all of these top faces here, these four over here, and go E, S, and just scale those guys in. And then G, Z, bring them up a little bit. X, and delete those faces. And what we can do is just select these edges here and just bring them in a little bit. And uh, you can enable proportional editing if you wanna um, control more of the geometry and you can roll the middle mouse wheel like that. So just bring these guys in. Control R, add in a loop over here, like that. And then if you go A to select all of this geometry and you go right click, you can subdivide it to give it more geometry. And you can also come here to the smooth tool, click on that and drag this little yellow dot, and that's just gonna smooth this out a bit as well around the character. And don't worry if you get intersection points like this, so you can just go back to your face select, select the face, and because you have proportional editing enabled, you can just go G and just drag the guy out, and the rest will follow. And what we wanna do is make sure, if we go into wireframe here in the bottom, we just select these bottom faces here and go X and delete faces, just so it's open in the bottom, like that. Okay, so that should be enough geometry. Um, I might go control R, add in some more loops over here if it doesn't look subdivided enough. Okay, so that's looking good. So it's tab out of edit mode and we can go to object and just enable shades move. Okay, so let's do a few things here in our cloth. So let's grab with this guy selected, just minimize this in our modifier tab, so our mirror modifier. And then we're gonna go to our physics tab here. We're gonna add in a cloth. And what we're gonna do here is, first of all, under the cloth, we're gonna make the quality steps 12, hit enter. Then we're gonna go down, and what we wanna do is bring this tension amount down to five. I always find it works really good if you set the bending to something like 0.2 or 0.3. So I'm gonna go 0.2, it depends on the scale of your scene. And then what we wanna do is also come here, make this bending over here 0.2 as well, under the dampening. And one very important thing, if you want this to make physical sense, is we need to enable under um, object collisions, we want to go down here to self collision, because we want the cloth to be able to collide with itself as well, not just the character. And what we want to do is come here to the distance. Now, what this distance amount is. So sometimes, let's just quickly play this animation. What you're going to notice is if we play this animation, it's caching this out, okay? What's happening, there's a big distance, a big gap between the surface of our character and this cloth here, and the reason is, is because we um, have to mess around with this distance here. So if you come to this distance here, and you set to something like 0 0.01, so you make it smaller, and then you play the simulation, it's gonna, um, that gap's gonna get smaller and smaller, the lower you set, lower you set this amount. 
Now, if you go to your character, so click on a mesh character, it's also important that you, uh, you give the character that you have a collision um, surface here, like this collision physics. So I've already done this with this character, but if it's not, you can just go and add the collision. And you can see here under the collision settings, I've come down here to the soft and soft body and cloth. And if you come here to the thickness outer, you can make this amount here smaller. So the smaller you make this amount as well, the less distance you're going to have in between here. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Okay. So if you have too much of a gap, just keep that in mind. Those two settings, if you, that's frustrating you. So let's go back to our cloth. So select the cloth here. Go to our settings again, and where were we? So we were under the self-collision, and let's just make this 0 0.001, because I feel like that's still a little bit too big. So let's go to frame one and play that. Okay, and one thing we also want to do is go Control A and apply the scale if we scale this cube. So let's try that now. Okay, so that's a lot better. Okay, so for the first few frames, it's just standing there, and now our animation goes. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. And you can see here, if we go to our modifiers, because we did our mirror modifier first in the stack, we can have this cloth simulation run even without applying our mirror modifier. This is really handy because if we ever want to come back to frame one and just do a bit of editing, we can always come in here and our mirror is still quite active and it's going to save us a lot of work. So I might extrude that a little bit. You can grab these faces down here and go E, extrude them down if you want to make the skirt a little bit longer. This is a really cool workflow just that allows you to do stuff like this. So let's play that, see what that looks like. And like I said, the first few frames, it's just to get the cloths in going and then it'll kick in and it'll be interacting with our character here. Even though our character is rigged and animated, the cloth simulation can still work perfectly fine. Okay. So how's that all working? So the quality of this isn't looking too good. So what we can do is grab the cloth here. One thing I'm gonna show you guys, if you go back to your cloth settings here, one thing you can do if the quality isn't looking good is come here to your collision and you can set the quality steps up here really high. So I'm gonna go something like 24 and hit enter. And the higher you set this, the better that can be. And also if you come here to object collision, you can set the distance to 0 0.01 as well. And let's give that a shot. So it's gonna take longer obviously because you can't get anything for free. It's gonna do more calculations, but the overall result will be a lot more accurate. So yeah. Yeah, that's already looking a lot better. I can tell by looking at that, that's already looking quite good. Okay. So yeah, that is looking quite good. Um, what we can do is if you if you feel like it's still a bit too stiff, you can come here to your cloth settings and you can um, go up here and go to the stiffness and you can set the bending to 0.1 and you can come down here and set the bending to 0.1 and you can bring that amount lower and lower if you find it's too much. You can also set the tension to two, set the tension up here to two. Okay, so that's all looking pretty good. I might just set the quality steps to um, 20. I think 24 is a bit much. Okay, so that's all good. So what I'm gonna show you now is how, how do we cache this? So we don't have to keep running the simulation. So if we close the file, we don't lose any of this. So what we're gonna do is under our cloth, we're gonna go down to our cache. And by default, you're gonna see the simulation starts at one and it ends at 250. But because this animation only has 170 frames, we're gonna come here to the end make it 170 and hit enter. And now if we come here and bake these dynamics, it's gonna start going through here and it's gonna bake all of this in. So when we save our file, it's gonna remember this. So I'm just gonna let this run and it'll come back. Okay, so here we have our character. It's now cached out, the cloth simulation. I'm getting this kind of glitching happening here with my rig. It's just probably a bug in Blender 2.8 free. So I'm just gonna come here and just hide my rig. But you can see here, this is the cloth simulation. And like I said, the higher you're gonna set these quality settings here before you do the cache, um, the nicer things are gonna look. So if you come over to your um, self collision, you can set the quality under the collisions here higher. You can also mess around, like I said, if you feel like the distancing between the cloth and the character's surface, you can also come here to um, the distance amount down here under the self collision. You can also go to your character 
and go to the physics here, go to the collision and also mess around with these um, thick, thickness settings here. Um, so yeah, now that you've cached it, what you can do is go with your cloth selected, go to your modifiers panel. You can add modifiers on top of this in real time. So I'm gonna add a solidify modifier. That's gonna give our cloth some thickness. So you can mess around with this thickness amount. It's actually quite funny. Um, yeah, that's too much. So just bring it down just a very small amount. And on top of that, you can add a subdivision surface and just check that out. So yeah, that is looking pretty cool. Um, so I didn't invest a lot of time when I was uh, making the actual clothes, but you can spend as much time as you want. This is kind of just introducing you to some of the workflow, the techniques, some of the little settings you can keep in mind. So yeah, let's just add a material to this dress. Um, yeah, we'll just make one. <laughs> I don't know, it's just fun. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, um, uh, comment, like, subscribe, check me out on Patreon if you're interested in some of my other content that I do. Um, I hope this wasn't too confusing. So yeah, here it is. Thank you for watching.